Welcome back investors, Jake here. Currently we're on day two of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's pretty upsetting and I'll make a dedicated video talking more about it this weekend. But uncertainty in the market can create buying opportunities. So in this video, I want to open a new debit spread position on Google. And when we check in with the market, the Dow Jones and S&P are currently down big. S&P down 0.95, Dow Jones down 1.92. But the Nasdaq, interestingly, is, is hanging on. It's still barely in the green, which is surprising given the news. And I honestly believe, guys, that uh, Putin's decision to invade Ukraine yesterday is going to go down in history comparable to Hitler invading Poland on September 1st, 1939. This was a completely unprovoked attack. Yes, Ukraine was talking about joining NATO like six or seven years ago, obviously for security guarantees to stop Russia from invading them. But it wasn't imminently going to happen. Uh, there was nothing imminently happening that could justify this full-scale invasion. Currently, we're in the 48-hour period of shock and awe in which the Russian Air Force is destroying any air capability that Ukraine has. So currently, they're blowing up all the landing strips, all the airports, all the air defense systems, all the communication nodes. And Russia's ground forces are invading from the north, the east, and the south. Tanks are rolling in, and they're going to start uh, basically circling these cities until any Ukrainian forces in the cities decide to stand down. And Russia needs this war to go very, very fast. They got to take the capital, uh, prop up a puppet government, uh, and then get the Ukrainian military to uh, respect the authority of that fake government. And if they don't do this quickly, then they're going to have trouble with uh, uh, an insurgency developing. You know, Afghanistan defeated the Soviet Union in the 1980s. If you want to argue they defeated uh, the United States as well, the, the Taliban is still there. So the playbook for defeating a superpower is not very complicated. And currently it's already happening. Anybody who hates Russia, think about all these former Warsaw Pact companies, or think about oppressed people in Moldova, Belarus, Georgia, or Chechnya. Anybody that wants to get a gun and uh, kill some Russian soldiers, they're currently making their way to Ukraine. So potentially an insurgency could develop while Russia has uh, 150,000 troops on foreign soil. Additionally, there could be civil unrest and protests amongst people that don't like Russian rule in Belarus, Moldova, you know, Georgia, Chechnya. I'm even hearing reports that people are trying to organize protests against the war in, in Moscow, but obviously it's illegal to uh, protest your government uh, in Russia. So why? Why is Russia doing this now? And I think Vladimir Putin has been ruling over a country for 22 years where it's just declining. And he's viewing this as his last opportunity. He's almost 70 years old. He's viewing this as his last opportunity to use his military and strategic advantage to get the Soviet Union back together. Russia's population peaked in 1992 and it's been aging and declining ever since. They don't have a very good birth rate, uh, and they don't like immigration. Additionally, Russia's economy peaked in 2013. You could argue that the sanctions put on them after they invaded Crimea might have caused this uh, recession or depression, but their economy has not grown significantly in the last eight years. Additionally, when we think about the impacts on the U.S. stock market and the U.S. economy from all these sanctions going on Russia, and it's not, it's not really a big deal in my opinion. I think the impact on the U.S. stock market, the news is scary, this is going to be a short-term sell-off, but Russia's economy is smaller than Italy. Who would have thought that Italy had a bigger economy than Russia did? Russia's economy at 1.48 trillion, this is their GDP, 
it's only maybe one fifteenth of what the United States is. China is the second largest at 14.7. You can look at, you know, the 50 states in America, and Russia's economy is smaller than New York State and bigger than Florida. It's about the same size as Pennsylvania and Ohio put together. So imagine Pennsylvania and Ohio uh, paying for and maintaining the world's second largest military. So Russia is destroying itself, crippling itself, maintaining this huge military presence in the world. And I just think Vladimir Putin wants to do something with it. He's He's been president for 22 years, and uh, he wants to flex his muscle and just start invading some other countries. I'll talk more about this in a video this weekend, but we uh, blew through a very significant technical indicator for the entire market. Last couple of videos, I've been talking about this, guys, the fact that we're creating lower highs going down and now confirmed lower lows going down. So where is this new, you could argue, level of support, line of support? Uh, right here, I don't know, maybe, maybe going back uh, 41.50. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and beef this, uh, this color up. So this new level of support for the market at about 41.50 actually goes all the way back to April of last year. So if you put any money into S&P 500 index funds after April of last year, you're currently negative on those deposits. When we check in with my Schwab accounts, I'm down 13,000 or about 22% year to date. But my strategy in anticipation for Russia invading Ukraine actually has worked. I, I sold calls against my long calls on Apple, Berkshire, and Texas Instruments, and currently I'm up pretty big. Uh, so the calls that I sold on Apple are up 2,300. The calls that I sold on Berkshire are up 2,700. Texas Instruments, they're up 641. So what I can do if I think we've created a new local low is I can try and time it by buying to close these for the profit. So I was paid uh, 6042 for these calls on Apple, and I can now buy them back for less, buy them back for cheaper. So I am going to do that first in this video on Apple and Berkshire. The reason why is because Berkshire Hathaway is giving their fourth quarter earnings report tomorrow, February 25th, and it's going to be good. Uh, when you think about the fourth quarter performance of companies that they own in their portfolio, like Bank of America, Apple, Coca-Cola, even though they've seen a, a sell-off the last two months, in the fourth quarter, everything was looking amazing. So I imagine they're going to beat on revenue. They're going to beat on earnings per share. It should give the stock a pop. So I'm going to leave uh, the Texas Instruments calls in place, and I'm going to buy to close these positions, uh, th these uh, calls that I sold on Apple and Berkshire. Okay, fast forward, and I've bought to close all of these contracts. I still have my long calls in place, and they're still positive. However, they have pulled back pretty significantly as Apple has gone all the way down to 152. Looking at the stochastic guys, we're in the oversold range and the percent K is about to go back above the percent D line, indicating that probably Apple will bounce back and at least get back to, I think, this level of 170. I can decide what I want to do once Apple's share price uh, recovers from this sell-off. Same thing with Berkshire Hathaway. You can see from the stochastics that this had sellerous momentum and just with the whole Ukraine thing, it was dragging this stock down. This stock reached a high of 322, so there's a strong level of resistance at 320, but it's, it's sold off back to $300 a share. Once again, I think that their earnings report yesterday is going to be good, and this will see a bounce. If we can get back to 320, then I'll think about, once again, if I want to uh, sell calls against them to basically... Caps, cap my upside, but protect my downside.
So in this video, I want to open a new position on Google, and you can see that Google gave their earnings at the beginning of the month. The stock uh, shot up huge to about 3,000, and since it had earnings, it's sold off over 13%. So if you want to get it at a 13% discount from its 52-week high, uh, it's, it's uh, a pretty good buy at this moment. If you're not familiar with Google, this is their homepage. If you want to check out their website, this is what it looks like. And obviously, Google is an amazing company that everybody knows. Subsidiaries include Waymo, Firebase, Google Fire, DeepMind, uh, and others. And looking at the technicals, this stock has been trading sideways, consolidating for a very long time. Basically, it hasn't gone anywhere since uh, August of last year. And more recently, with these uh, sell-offs and other tech stocks and the NASDAQ, it's bounced down below its 200-day moving average. But it hits this 2,500, and there seems to be strong buyer support for the stock right there. Additionally, you can see there was a lot of seller momentum going down until basically today, the percent %K has gone back above the percent %D on the stochastics. So I want to capture some of this price movement as I think Google is going to bounce back. Where are the lines of support, lines of resistance? And first I want to show you this crazy uptrend I spotted uh, going all the way back to the COVID crash in March of uh, 2020. It basically uh, bottomed here again and it's you know, these, these uptrend slopes are the least reliable, least accurate of any lines you could draw. However, it is kind of funny that, you know, there's now three points of contact on this line showing that there's uh, support on this specific slope. But obviously, lines of resistance, uh, there's a pretty strong one here at 3,000. Will it get above that? Probably not, uh, but we can capture price movements leading up to that. Where are the lines of support? And there's obviously a very strong one here at 2,500. So it's consolidating in this very nice range. And ideally, this slope is gonna give Google some support going over the next couple months. Let's quick recap their fundamentals and let me show you why I like Google so much right now. When we look at their revenue growth, this is macrotrends.net. I mean, this is just bonkers, guys. They're one of the world's largest companies and they're still growing revenue year over year by 32%, 41%, 61%, 34%. When we go to their net income, this is a profitable company. Uh, growing their earnings per share quarter over quarter. Pretty nice. Uh, something Google has been doing recently is they've been doing stock buybacks. They don't offer a dividend, even though they probably could at this point. But they peaked their share count in about 2018, and they're returning profits from the company to the shareholders in the form of stock buybacks year over year. And that's going to continue. When we go to their price ratios, guys, I mean, this is pretty remarkable how much this has come down, but their current PDE is only 23. Given that they're still growing their revenues year over year in the 20 to 30 to 40 percent range, the fact that their PE is a 23, and it's the lowest it's been. It's the lowest it's been uh, in the last two years. And it's lower than it's been historically valued when you go back to 2014, 2015, uh, so forth and so forth. Price to free cash flow, once again, uh, currently it's at 28, which is lower than it's been the last two years. And even in the past, guys, you could argue it's lower than it was in 2013, 2014, even though they're growing tremendously. So everything that I can look at here, especially uh, with this level of support, both from this slope and this 2500, Google is a screaming buy. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to open a debit spread. The reason why, I mean, if you just want to buy the stock, you've got lots of upside here in anticipation of that 20 for 1 split in June or July. But I'm going to 
open a debit spread because it's more affordable than just buying a call contract outright. Let's go to the option chain and I'll explain to you what I mean. So we have to start by picking an expiration date and I'm not gonna go all the way to January of next year like I normally do because I think I'm gonna hit this debit spread pretty, pretty soon in the next couple weeks or couple months for sure. But I'm gonna go with an expiration date of September 16th. Once again, I just like de-risking and giving myself time on these contracts should an unexpected war break out. But we're gonna go expiration date September 16th. Let's add some strikes here. And I'm looking to uh, capture the range between 2600 and 2700. So this doesn't quite show me uh, everything I wanna see here. So we'll just uh, expand all. Now, if I were to buy a call contract outright on Google, right now that would cost me over $24,000 for one contract. Once Google does its 20 for one stock split, you basically can divide this by 20. It'll be much more manageable to trade options on Google after their stock split. So we're gonna buy the call contract with a strike of 2,600 and this costs over $24,000. To make this more reasonable or manageable, we're gonna sell a call against it at the exact same time. I'm gonna go with the strike of 2,700. So what I've done is I've capped my upside. If Google explodes past the uh, share price of 2,700, the call that I sold is now losing me almost as much as the call that I bought. But if Google uh, can recover pretty fast up to about 2700, I'm capturing most of the price movements, gaining intrinsic value from share price appreciation through this range. So once Google gets back above 2700, I'll probably sell to close this debit spread maybe roll it between 2700 and 2800 once again trying to capture that price movements between a specific range so let's go to the top and we'll uh, set this trade up and uh, the closer strike price once again you're buying to open so 2600 we are buying to open and then the 2700 we are selling to open once again, to create a net debit, so this is a vertical call spread, of 5,150. Here's the trade window. Once again, just confirming everything. This is gonna cost me about $5,180, and I can capture uh, the price movement, once again, between this range. So what is, my, what is my max upside? Let's see if the trade and probability calculator uh, can figure this out for me. So if I pay 5,180, my max profit is 4,820. It's the width of the strikes minus the premium you pay for the debit spread. So if I held this until expiration and Google was above 2,700 at expiration, max profit would be 4,800. I'm not gonna do that though. As soon as Google gets above 2,700, I'll roll this debit spread and then try and capture the next hundred dollars in share price movement. Okay, we're back in my accounts and once again, I've released my long calls on Apple and Berkshire. Hopefully the market can recover tomorrow and next week. I've also entered this debit spread position on Google. So I've well positioned myself to gain back some of my losses should the market uh, basically uh, soften after the news. The, the lead up is often more frightening than the actual events. Obviously what's going on in Ukraine is terrible and horrible, but the true economic impact to the US stock market I feel like will be smaller than, than, than people might think. I'm still sitting on $16,000 in cash, once again uh, looking to open new positions, and if the market continues to sell off, I will keep buying on the way down. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. Until the next video, take care.